Hello everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to the Book Refuge and welcome to my January reading wrap up, uh, my first uh, monthly wrap up of the year. I'm very excited to talk about this. I read some amazing things this month, some very highly anticipated books, as well as some that were complete surprises to me. And it was just amazing. So we're going to go through it. This is also, I'm so excited because I got to use my like bullet journal for the first time. So on like the one side I did my TBR and on this side I like have my wrap up and I'm just so proud of myself. Even though I know for me, my handwriting is super cringy for me. I've had plenty of people tell me your handwriting is fine. I'm like, for me, I don't love it. I'm pretty proud of myself that I am doing this and I'm really loving how my journal is starting to turn out. Um, like this was my um, schedule for the romance takeover readathon and I thought this turned out really beautiful. I'd had my bingo board, TBR, and then like the events were listed here. And I'm doing that again for um, Pharaoh Feb coming up and I'm really loving that. I love the like flat lays. So I'm really proud of myself. But we're going to go through first my stats and then the top five books that I read in the month of January. I'm very excited to do that. So, oh, one thing I did forget as well. I had two DNFs and then a two and a half and a two star, which we'll get to in a minute. And when I did my wrap up of December, I had talked about that I would talk about my lowest rated books as well. So we'll do that right before we do my favorite. So we end on a positive note. But I forgot to put it in my journal because I don't want my least favorite books in my journal. Like I don't need to remember those in my journal, but I have them listed over there. So we'll do those. Anyway, let's go ahead. Ooh, let's go ahead and dive in to my stats for January. Okay. We'll put these up here on the screen. I read 52 books and that was 1,800, 445 pages, which averaged to about 614 pages per day, which I'm always happy to see. 52 books is actually the exact same that I read in December. So that's pretty cool. Um, something I will mention when I get further on is that I felt like I read a ton this month, which I know, I know that I did, but it's not like 52 is like a lower monthly number for me. I read some huge books this month is a bit part of the thing too. Like I had three books that were almost a thousand pages long. So there's that in there as well. The formats that these books were in were 23 ebooks, 28 audiobooks, seven arts and 18 physical. And as I always say, there, you'll notice that that number equals more than 40, 52. And part of that reason is that I often am reading a book both physically and on Audible because I like to read and listen at the same time. So there's usually some overlap between like my physical and my audiobooks. And I just like to point that out. It's not a big deal. It doesn't, you know, the book is still being read. I just like to enjoy it two ways. The subgenres of these books were 13 contemporary, 16 historical, 7 dark romance, 9 fantasy, 3 erotic romance, 3 paranormal, and 1 that was an other. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fantasy books, which made me very happy. The ratings of these books were 6, 6 star. This did include two books that were rereads. So there was four new books that were six stars. Just wanted to put that out there. Nine five star books, five 4.5 star books, 21 four star books, four 3.5 stars, three three stars, and then one 2.5, one two star, and two DNFs, as I mentioned. Um, then just a couple other random cute things that I wanted to, you know, I wanted to put them in my journal because it's fun. Um, these recs mostly came from, and now I'm tracking where I get my recommendations from. The top three places recommendations came from were seeing them on Instagram, um, TikTok, no surprise, or from channel members. Those were the main recommendations for my books that I read this month. 
Then the top three tropes that I read. This is something I'm very excited to be tracking. Um, and no surprise, no surprise because of the number of historicals that I had. My number one trope was marriage of convenience slash like uh, arranged marriage. Those are kind of put together. That was my number one trope, which made sense when I looked at what my number one subgenre was because there are a lot of those in historical. Then age gap was the second and forced proximity was the third and those were basically like tied. So yeah, those are my top three tropes. I was excited to use those because I got to use the stickers that Brie made from her shop for my tropes. It was really cute. So okay, then let's talk about the books that I didn't like. As I said, I was going to do. We will start with the doozies. So there are just four we'll mention real quick. The two DNFs. And as I have shared many times, there are many reasons why I would DNF a book. Sometimes I'm just bored and I DNF it, but I'll go back to it someday. Sometimes I'm just not vibing with it, so it's not worth my time to push through it. And yeah, sometimes I just drop off of the book. Usually if I just drop off the book, I don't count it as a DNF. I will put it back into my to be read. But sometimes I'm like, okay, I'm dropping off from this book and I will not be picking it back up again. And then I count it as a DNF. So the two DNFs I had were Lick by Kylie Scott. And I felt kind of bad about this one because I was gifted these books by a viewer. They weren't like, oh, I specifically think you'll like these. They just, she had sent me a bunch of books. And this just wasn't working for me. It's a rock star. It's a married in Vegas. And then it's like, they are working on getting divorced, but then, oh, maybe we want to stay together type of thing. Um, I don't know. It just wasn't working for me. It's partly that it doesn't age super well, in my opinion. And the hero was just a kind of hero that makes me agitated. So that's as far as I made it was like 60 pages into that one. And then the other DNF I had was also another book that was on my TBR and that was One Night Promised by Jody Ellen Malpas. And I can't blame this on anyone else but me because I had purchased all three of these books. I had bought one of them at a thrift store for only a couple dollars. And then all the rest, I was like, oh, I want these. And I'm like, why? Why did you think that was a good decision, Jennifer? I would like to know. I cannot tell you why Jennifer made that decision. I can't do it can't tell you so I just don't vibe with that form of storytelling anymore the audiobook wasn't getting to me and it just has a like trope set up of like the billionaire who just wants to fuck someone with like BDSM elements that I think you know what it's a copy of and I've read a couple of gems books that I've liked but for the most part I've not been impressed so I think I'm gonna stop trying and I'm since I am re-scanning in all my books in my library, I'm there's some that I'm just letting go of them since I don't need to keep them. And the books that I own by her are some that I'm doing that with. So anyway, so those were the two that I DNF'd. The book that I gave 2.5 stars was Hard Fall by Sarah Nay. This was one that was a viewer recommendation. Um, I used, I have read quite a few books by Sarah Nay a few years ago because they were all on, um, Audible Escape and I had like blew through those books and I really enjoyed it. I really did. But this one particularly, I am being a thousand percent honest, the narrator is what killed this book for me a lot. It already wasn't a plot I totally liked. Um, this is a, this is a sports romance. He's in baseball. Her dad is like the team manager, I think. Um they end up in a fake dating situation and like it was okay it was okay the thing that killed this book which would have been maybe like a three three and a half star was the narration done by the hero um i won't like put his name up or anything because i'm not like trying to put this person on blast i have listened to other books this hero has done and not had such a visceral reaction before this hero this narrator has done but this one just was like so cringy so cringy guys I don't even know what else to say it was horrible he did horrible voices for the females and so it made the sex scenes repulsive to me like that is the word I'm using they were repulsive to me I was flabbergasted by how awful they were 
So when I was done with that book, I was like, I have no positive feelings. And I gave this two and a half stars. And then the book that I gave two stars was Dark Elves Taken by Jet Michaels. This was one that it was sent to me by a viewer who didn't know how to safely unhaul this book because it is very erotic and um, depicts rape and non-consensual situations quite strongly. Um, and so they sent it to me and I was like, sure, I'll check it out. Um, and I'd forgotten when they'd messaged me that they would send it to me about what it was about. And so I got it and I read it and I was horrified. And I was like, oh yeah, that's why they sent it to me is because they didn't know where to put it. So, but apparently it's a pretty rare like book. So I don't know, maybe I'll like raffle it off or, uh, try to find someone who wants it. But I, it was, it's this breed of dark elves who they don't have any female elves so the only way that they can procreate is to steal a human woman and like turn her into a dark elf and then find her mate and the way that they find her mate is they let different elves fuck her for eight days at a time until she gets pregnant and you can only get pregnant with your perfect mate so once she gets pregnant they know she's found her mate but she is like completely unwilling to do this except for the spell that they do on her to turn her into a dark elf makes her extremely horny. Um, and guess what? If she doesn't find her mate, if her mate doesn't find her and fuck her, she gets taken to an elf brothel to be used by elves until she dies basically. So it was equally like so ridiculous. It was hilarious and extremely disturbing. So I don't even know why I gave it two stars, but like, I just don't really give any one star out. I didn't last year and I probably won't this year, like two star because to me, like a DNF is kind of a one, but a two, like I finished it. I just don't know what was happening. I don't know. It maybe should be a one star, but that's what it was. Okay. Enough about the ones I didn't like. Those are my lowest rated things. Sorry. I didn't have a super great rant about any of those there. I just didn't have the energy for it to do it. But let's go ahead and talk about the books that I loved. Ugh, come on. Pardon me. The foot of my stand is not working. So now we're all nice and messed up. Okay. Let's talk about the books that I loved. So First up, we got to talk about The Temptation of a Highlander by Elisa Braden. This is book three in the Midnight in Scotland series. This is about Clarissa Meadows, who is being stalked by someone who is trying to pursue her. And so she goes to the Highlands to spend time with her friend Kate, who is married to a McPherson. And one of the other McPhersons, his name is Campbell, and he has his own place out there and he ends up getting asked to kind of be her bodyguard to protect her from this man who's stalking her. And then it also ends up being a marriage of, um, like kind of convenience, but really they both are super attracted to each other. So it's not really convenience. It's because they want to be together. It's very hot. But Lisa Braden's books are so sexy. Um, also, this hero has a little bit of the sight. So he's a little bit magical and mystical himself. It's great. There are trigger warnings for animal death. Quite a few in this. There are at least three. One of them happens in the prologue. You don't see the violent death, but you see what's like left behind. Um, and then there are some throughout because the stalker, he is a psychopath. Okay. And not the fun kind that we sometimes talk about on here. Like the not fun kind. Um, but this is delightful. Like, I freaking love this series. I can't wait for the next one. Um, and I think Elisa Brayden is so, so talented. And I hope to have her on my channel one day. Please, Elisa, I really want you to come chat with us about your hot Highlanders. So, there we go. Then we have to mention the book that I can't stop talking about. And that is Manacled by Sin Lin Yu. Did I read this in January? I cannot believe that I only read this less than a month ago because this book has just thrown me on my head. I don't even know what to say. Like I loved this so dearly. Um, one of my friends recommended this to me and she sold it to me. This is a very dark um, alternative universe fan fiction of Harry Potter where all of our loved ones are dead and Mal Malfoy um, gets given Hermione to be a surrogate 
because the um, magical elite, the purebloods, are not producing heirs. And so Voldemort has taken mudbloods who are magical or half-bloods and put them in manacles where they can't use their magic and given them to wizarding families to have their babies. That's what is happening. And this book is told in three parts. It's told in um, when Hermione is kind of waking up. She's been kept in a prison for 13 months underneath Hogwarts where nobody even knows she's alive, um, being tortured and kept in complete sensory deprivation, going crazy basically, and she gets brought out of prison to be put into this program and she gets given to Draco and um, his wife to get her pregnant and have them a magical baby. So this is The Handmaid's Tale crossed with dark Harry Potter and I will tell you everyone you love is dead. All the Weasleys, Harry Potter, all the people you love are dead. Okay this kind of diverges from the original lore it's a completely different world i'll just set that up but like what we know of harry potter it diverges from it in like um the fifth year even though there were like different setups kind of from the beginning but that's really where it turned out and we are like you know 10 years into this war and the good side has lost you know so again in the beginning we start where she's just coming out of this prison that she's been in for how long and then we have a flashback that goes back like three years in time to where a lot of the people that we care about, they are still alive, they're very broken, they have PTSD, they're trying to figure out how to win this war. And Hermione has been pushed to become a healer. And she is coming to realize that fighting the war with only good magic, fighting against evil with only good isn't working for them. And if they don't change their tactics, they're going to go extinct. They're gonna lose what they are trying to win if they continue on this way but um a lot of her friends they're like not willing to go to that place so i've said enough this is amazing you can find it on ao3 you can download it get it put on your kindle you can find the instructions how to do that it's very simple and it's amazing but it will wreck your life so be prepared then I was lucky enough to read an ARC and then I also have listened to the audiobook and now I have the physical book of Monroe by Cressley Cole. This is book 18 in the Immortals After Dark series. It is freaking phenomenal. Um, I'm so happy that I was lucky enough to get to read an ARC. Um, this was worth the wait in my opinion. It was fantastic. We get to know what happened to Monroe McGreeve. Um, when we saw a peek at him at the end of McGreeve. This is about Kiraney, who is a circus performer as well as a hunter of evil. And she is from the year like 1920. And so there is some time travel involved in this. And that's probably all that I should say. I mean, if you've read the other IAD, you're probably gonna read this. Immortals After Dark is what that means. I had someone ask me what IAD means. Immortals After Dark is the name of the series. Um, that is fantastic. So this was obviously a six star book. I freaking loved it. I read it twice this month and I want to read it again and like go through and highlight some things now that I have the physical book. So I definitely will. I can't wait. Then I read In Treat Me by Grace Draven. If you don't know, I'm going to be interviewing Grace Draven for Fantasy Romance February. She'll be on my channel on February 4th. And so I was deep diving into some of her books. And at the same time, my friend Crystal, she had read In Treat Me and she was like, it's fabulous. You have to read it. And I was like, okay. So I listened to the audiobook of this. This is a Beauty and the Beast retelling um, where the beast is actually very beastly. Um, and our heroine... Levan, Le yeah, Levan, her sister gets wooed by this young man who thinks that this younger sister can break the curse. But their, her older sister is like, no, you can't just have my sister. So she goes to be there to try to protect her sister. She's willing to let her sister be courted by this man, but she wants to make sure nothing bad is happening. What she isn't prepared for is for the father of this young man who is courting her sister to be this beastly man who is just 
fantastic. So he's proud, but he's disfigured and he is, you know, undying. Um, and Levan is not scared of him. She's not intimidated by him. And she actually has great compassion for him. She is feisty. She is sensuous. She's a widow. So she's very like sexually liberated and she's willing to get down in beastie town. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Um, I loved this. I absolutely love this. This was a six star read for me and it's my favorite book by Grace Draven that I've read. It was absolutely wonderful. And then the last one that I wanted to put on my favorites of the month is Descent by Sam Mariano. This is a standalone by her. It does fit into the black heart romance world, but you can definitely read it on its own. This book is about Kelvin Cutter, who is a psychopath who gets what he wants. He's a billionaire. He is like all powerful. He has ties to the mob. He can do whatever he wants. And our heroine, her name is uh, Haley, and she is the ex-girlfriend of one of his employees, and he's had his eye on her. And so he manipulates his employee into getting her into his grasp, and he manipulates her into coming to the sex club where her wants and her desires and her um, right to say no are stripped from her. And he rapes her. That's what happens. And our heroine, the way that she deals with that and the way that things go forward were fascinating. I couldn't put this book down. It was amazing. There was not a consensual sex scene until 70% into this book, though. This is extremely dark. This is very manipulative. I've said this multiple times now. This is as if Carter Mahoney, like, grew into an adult adult without ever having someone like Zoe to kind of, like, check him. Like, he is crazy. He's crazy. But I loved it. This was sexy. This was intense. This gave me a pit in my stomach the whole way through because I was just like, I feel so bad for Haley, but also I like these kind of stories every now and then. Like, I don't read these kind of books every day, but when I do, Sam Mariano does it better than anyone. That's all I have to say. I will have a deep dive into Sam Mariano coming out soon. I haven't done an author deep dive in quite a while, but I have now read almost all of her backlist. There's only like one other ones that I haven't read. So I'm ready to do a deep dive on her, which I'm very excited to do. So there you go. Those are my favorite books that I read in January of 2021. Thank you so much for watching this. Um, if you'd like to know more about every single book I read this month, you can check out my weekly wrap ups playlist. I have one for the first four weeks of the year as well as one that goes for 2021 that has every single one of the 700 plus books that I read last year and what I think about them. So definitely check out those playlists if you want some recommendations. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.